So a dear brother of mine who was also a subscriber to this channel emailed me a great question and one I've wanted to ask or answer or deal with for some time now. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and read his email and then respond to it after. So his text or his email reads, I had a girl say that my posts on IG are too dark and sometimes too negative and that we need to preach more grace and less law. I'm usually posting Vody and Paul Washer. She asked if I ever posted stuff on Joy. I said yes, but sometimes you have to hear the bad news to get to the good news and that we still go through trials but we can count it all joy when we do. She thinks some reformed preachers are too dark, and can sometimes be legalistic because it's not enough grace. So you think that's, or do you think that can be the issue with us Calvinists? Are we too focused on God's law and wrath and not enough on his grace? That's a good question. So let's hone in on what this woman is really saying here, what she's really asking. And what she's really asking is this, why are you reformed Christians so dark and negative? Why is it all about judgment and wrath? Where's the love, the peace, and the joy? Now, to answer her question, it's because we are biblical. And that's not to say that biblical Christians don't incorporate all the elements of God's grace, because we do. The problem is, people like this woman want us to only focus on those things because they make her feel good. She doesn't want to hear about the wrath of God, election, the sovereignty of God in hell, and in large, it's because that's where she's headed. Now, I'm about to make a point, and I want you to listen clearly. True Christians do not shy away or avoid sermons on hell and judgment. A true Christian can sit under a biblical preacher who's preaching a sermon on hell and glory in it, embrace it, and praise God for it. And why is that? <clears throat> Excuse me. One reason is because a true Christian is not going there. Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. True Christians have, have been delivered out of that. Okay. And the second reason is because Hell is a good thing when you understand it biblically. The true believer understands how badly they deserve to go there. But by way of grace, we have, we have escaped it. Now, let's look at some wisdom from the wisest man to have ever lived, King Solomon. What does he have to say about what this woman has said? <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 118, and this is one of my all-time favorite verses and one of the first verses that I ever learned when I first got saved. Ecclesiastes 118. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. What is sorrow? The definition of sorrow is a feeling of deep distress caused by loss, disappointment, or other misfortunes suffered by one's, oneself or others. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a mall during the holiday season? Hundreds upon hundreds of people shopping, okay? Just a sea of people. You ever just watched and thought to yourself, in under 60 years, all these people will be in hell. The majority of all these people, if not all of them, will be in hell. Lost people do not know and cannot comprehend the danger they are in. They cannot see it. They do not have eyes to see. But we do, Christians, we do. And that is why he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. That is why we preach the gospel, because we are dealing with something that most people in this world cannot comprehend, understand, or see. That is why this isn't about fun. That is why this isn't about good feelings, okay? It's about biblical truth. It's about shedding a light on what people need in order to be saved from the wrath of God. Okay? So people like this woman, the reason she thinks the way she does is because she has not received that which brings forth <clears throat> true knowledge, and that is the Spirit of God. There isn't a discernment in her for the true things of God. Um, and you'll see this in a lot of people. I had one person email me and pretty much get on my case for going after Joel Osteen. And she said the primary reason why she loved Joel is because he makes her feel good. Okay, so I hope I've answered this question. Brother, if, I, if you want to go further in depth, just email me. Let's talk about it. But here's the point. Here was a man who realized something. This is not about forming a religion. This is not about a social club. This is not about all of us just being moral. This is about a real God who is really holy and really just. This is about a fallen people that are really fallen and corrupt and condemned. And this is about how can we be saved from hell 
unto God. And that's why I talk this way. I, it's not just because I like being mean. It's just true. As a matter of fact, I would be mean if I did it the other way, wouldn't I? If you were crossing a railroad track and I saw the train coming, I would not whisper. I would not look in a book of etiquette to try to find out what would be the best way of approaching you without offense. I would do everything in my power to knock you off that track. Same here. You're on a track, but it's worse than a train. Hell is moving. You say, Brother Paul, are you trying to scare people? Well, you've discerned correctly. You need to be scared. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. Paul the Apostle did not make these journeys and risk his life and die daily for just a religion that really doesn't matter. Countless Christians, the over 50 million that have died since Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, the thousand who died today and every day now in modern history, about a thousand Christians are being martyred. Why? Because this is real. It really is real. I know you look at adults a lot of times and they you know, profess Christ and and everything, and you look, and they're more concerned about what's going on at Walmart or something than they are what's going on in Scripture. But that still doesn't mean it's not real. It is. You're going to die. And some of you are going to hell.